Uh, that's all I really have to give. I wish I had hot chocolate or something to give you to warm you up. But today's lessons, uh, let us begin with the announcements for the day. Some of you may be familiar, a memorial service for Marion Myers is being held on February the 26th on a Saturday at 1 p.m. at St. Martin's Luther Ch Lutheran Church in Archbald, Archbald, Ohio. The service will also be live streamed on St. Martin's Facebook page, and the link can be found on the Facebook page, on St. Paul's uh, Facebook page, and in the weekly announcements. For middle school and high school, the high school youth group, they will be sledding this afternoon, also enjoying hot chocolate at Romulo's this Sunday from 11.30 to 1.30 p.m. If you uh, wish to be, uh, have transportation provided here from St. Paul's. A call out to all those people who are bell ringers. Join the handbell chorus or handbell choir for this short-term commitment during Lent. Rehearsals will be in person. The dates and times are yet to be determined. The choir piece will be recorded for Easter. Also as a reminder, the Shrove Tuesday Pancake Supper has returned. All are welcome to join us on March the 1st at 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Um, bring your appetite to feast on as many pancakes as you can eat. Join us at the beginning of the 2022 Lenten season with our Ash Wednesday service, which will be offered at 7 p.m. in person. It will be live streamed on Facebook and available on St. Paul's YouTube channel. And also, World Hunger Kickoff is scheduled for March the 5th and 6th. You'll have the opportunity to pick up a coin box here at St. Paul's and collect change to fight hunger during Lent. Return your coin boxes to St. Paul's on Easter Sunday. Those are all the official announcements that I have at this time. I would ask, is there anyone in the congregation who needs to make a, a, an announcement? Well, then I would say open your hearts and your minds to Scripture. Because today we're going to talk about one of the things that, uh, well, many of us are familiar with, the golden rule, do unto others as you would have others do unto you. It's a principal teaching in the Christian church, and it has to be extended into our world today. If you think about the division that has occurred in our society, this is one of the times when we learn how to live with diversity and how we communicate to one another. So Jesus' instruction on this is quite clear, that we have to love our neighbors uh, and be with them. So if you'll just take a moment, prepare yourselves for worship, we will begin. Our worship begins with the brief order for confession and forgiveness, which is found on the frontispiece of your bulletin or on the screen. Let us pray. Sometimes we fear that when we confess all that is wrong, we will be exposed and condemned. Our hope in Christ tells us a different thing, that when we confess, we open up the way to mercy and forgiveness. Trusting in that hope, let us make our confession, first in silent prayer, and then together. Let us pray. Gracious God, source of all life, Lord of mercy and grace, hear our prayer. We are so scattered, O God. We flit from cause to cause. We are easily distracted by the next important thing. We think about yesterday and tomorrow, but not today. Help us to be mindful of the grace and beauty that surround us right now. Help us commit to the need that is before us right now. Help us to think deeply and respond generously as you have loved us deeply and forgiven us generously. This we pray in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Friends, hear this good news. The love of God is beyond measure, and you are included in that love. Know that you are forgiven, and thus free to love and serve. Alleluia. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all Let's pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. For your people here who have come to give you praise, for the strength to live your word, let us pray to the pray. God, inexhaustible source of love and life, be with us in our time of worship as we seek the love it takes to walk in the ways of your Son. Help us love our enemies and bless those who wrong us, for we cannot do so alone. Teach us the joy of treating others with all the same respect and goodness with which we hope to be treated. May our every word and deed make known that we are your beloved children and vessels of your love. Amen. Please be seated.
boys and girls, thank you so much for joining us this week for Children's Chat. I hope you had a wonderful Valentine's Day. The question of the day is... Who do you love and why? Lukey. Lukey? Why do you love Lukey? Your best friends a long time ago. Henry. Okay, Henry, who do you love? Lukey. You love Lukey? Do you love your family? I love my mom because she gave birth to me and she's kind to me every day. And she helps me with my homework and things. I also love my dad because he coaches me in basketball and also helps me to do a lot of tasks. Grandma and grand, like grandpa, they do lots of stuff with us. They helped us do homework. And they come watch your sports too? Mm-hmm. Yep. I love Mom because she's so caring for me. I love Nolan because he's so cute and I just want to squeeze him all day. Amy, who do you love? Mommy. Why do you love Mommy? Yeah. Because why? No way. No way. And mommy, because mommy does not scare her. I love my family because they care for me. It's so great to be able to love people in our lives, isn't it? This week's gospel reading is Luke chapter 6, and Jesus challenges us. He wants us to love our enemies. Can you repeat that after me? Love your enemy. So let's carry the spirit of Valentine's Day throughout the week this week and challenge one another to love all people around us, even those who have hurt us. Maybe somebody said something mean to you or did something at school that embarrassed you. Love them anyways. That's Jesus' challenge. You see, when we love people, even those that have hurt us, it makes us more peaceful and more joyous. So will you take a minute and fold your hands and pray with me? Holy Spirit, help us to be instruments of love so that we may sow peace throughout the world. Help us to love our enemies as ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First reading is from Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph, is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me, and they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children, and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you here, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, 
Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good for, to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Well, last week we had the Sermon on the Plain, and it included what Luke considered the blessings and the woes that were named by Jesus for the crowds who had come to be healed and to hear him. These verses put us on a level playing field with all of those to whom Jesus once spoke, the disciples, the crowd of witnesses. We get to hear Jesus open up such a different worldview from our own that it still leaves us taken aback. The real power that gives Jesus credibility has been demonstrated before Jesus spoke. We heard that power came out of him and healed everyone. First, there is real power behind them, power to make things happen then and even in the here and now. Before this teaching about God's reign and delivering the message about what was expected of all who are in relationship with God, Jesus was on the mountain, a, pay, a place of closeness to God, praying. Now in his sermon, Jesus meets humanity on a level field. Along with those eyewitnesses who are important to the veracity of Luke's story, we as readers and hearers of his word see that power upending the power of lesser troublesome spirits in our world. We see that Jesus' own predictions about his mission were truthful and that they were aligned with God's promised outcomes for humankind. In his teaching and prophesying in the synagogue, Jesus has called upon the ancient words of his own scripture to attest to God's continuing purposes, which he had been anointed to carry out. After the blessing and woes of the Beatitudes put those same purposes in memorable form, Jesus issued a call to take notice, to be attentive to the word of God. He speaks to his disciples, to all who are listening. The passage begins with a slight shift in a description of the audience, for he says, I declare to you who are listening. One could emphasize the use of the present part participle in that sentence and tra translate it rather as, I declare to all of you who are still listening. Then he begins to describe the way in which those in covenantal relationship with God are called to live. That leads to the second reality that really shakes up hearers. All that power flows from Jesus is dedicated, is dedicated to and will bring about a very different world, God's world, a peaceable kingdom in which violence and retaliation are absent, where the power of God's will levels the playing field no matter what rules we have established to create and protect our positions. The thriving of all creatures in God's realm requires a different ethos from those customarily in place. Jesus quickly lists a bunch of plural imperatives to describe the behavior for those listening. 
The very first imperative is love. It is followed by some quite concrete examples. Do good. Just don't, don't just think well of, but do good too. Pray for, bless, give, do. This is a constructive ethos of behavior that will be summed up later in Luke's writings, which is the basis of the examples that Jesus puts forward. He sums them up and is itself a touchstone for questions about how to live in God's realm. Those who follow Jesus are to live as God lives, mercifully and generous beyond expectation, beyond comprehension. The norm for the world is what sinners do very well indeed. They love, lend, and even do good. In our own day, it would be a joy if even this, the way of the sinner was broadly lived out. But for disciples, for God's people, loving, lending, and doing good are all about generosity that does not draw boundaries based on a recipient's response. It is good to keep in mind that love in this passage is about willing the good for another and then acting upon that will. The golden rule is insufficient for those in covenant relationship with God. Remember that you are a child of God. One's own wishes for oneself are no measure for one's treatment of others. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Earlier in Luke's gospel, we heard in Mary's song to God, who is twice identified as being merciful. And in the song of Zechariah, likewise, that mercy, a sign of God's fidelity to God's promise, creates a people who might serve God without fear in holiness and righteousness. All gifts flow from God's tender mercy and fidelity to the promises that he has made. In Luke's chapter 6, we see that generous healing, restoration, and hope flowing through Jesus. Jesus makes sure we who are listening know that it is our calling as well. Coupled with the power that flows out of Jesus so mercifully at the beginning of our passage, the power to do healing and curing and casting out of spirits continues throughout the gospel and is a power shared by Jesus' followers in the book of Acts. That for which Mary and Zechariah longed, expressed in words from Israel's great history of longing, comes to life. Jesus' power is present, a promise that the realm of God, the kingdom of God, is no fantasy, but that it is being lived out now on a level playing field, a level playing field in the world of Jesus. This is a threat as perceived by the religious establishment, and it is dangerous to the status quo. It's the reason for the crucifixion and the resurrection, for Good Friday and Easter. But the cruciform life, life in relationship with God, and life in relationship with our neighbors and our enemies. This longing for relationship is not something unique to the ancient world. Longing for a faithful relationship where promises are kept, the roots can go deep. A relationship that can bring healing and produce joy is not something we can relegate to the past. Jesus' words to those who continue to listen, who give heed, using an old phrase, promise that we are part of that relationship too. We are called to live in God's realm in accordance with God's character, for we were created in the image of God, and the power is there for us to do it, to be caught up, to be healed, to lose the hostile spirits that hold us captive, to receive and live mercy. There is no dearth of the realities needing our best efforts in this world, and thoughtful mercy now is required more than any other time. And so we remember the words, do unto others, as you would have others do unto you. Amen.
And now, using the words of the Apostles' Creed, let us confess our faith before God and one another. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your church to follow the leading of your love, especially when it's risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy just as we have first received mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Nurture fields that lie dormant, resting until it is time to bloom again. Bless farmers and all who cultivate fields and urban gardens. Give favorable weather for planting. Bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest and guard against famine and disease. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Look upon our world with mercy that we delight in an abundance of peace. Protect all whose lives are marred by war and civil unrest. Release political prisoners and amplify the voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness. Mend broken relationships. Heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness. Strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled, especially Sean Conrad, Charles Roward, Bonnie McShane, Gary, Len Toy, Judy Matthews, Karen Lawfer, Jim Price, Russell Swab, Marcia Grace, Emma Cunningham, our homebound members, and friends of St. Paul's Bishop Lozano, Pastor Larson, Joe and family, Michael, Maurice, Suzanne, Sharon, Elsie, and for those we name aloud and in our hearts. Bob and Michael Wright. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You bind us together into one family Teach us to forgive one another and to resolve conflicts with humility and patience. Bless families of all shapes and sizes and show love to those who are lonely or grieving. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our 
since we have great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. At this time, we have the opportunity to basically share a sign of peace with our neighbor. So if you would, please show a sign of peace, but also look to the camera so that we can kind of connect with those people who are not with us today. Peace of the Lord be with you.
source of every blessing. As you sent Joseph into Egypt to save the world from famine, you sent Jesus into our lives to save us from selfishness and greed, for teaching us to treat others as we would have them treat us. We give you our thanks and praise. Bless these gifts that we have received from your bounty and send them forth to those in need, whether they be friend or foe, for all of your beloved children and our sisters and brothers. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who, sharing our life, delivered us to reveal glory and love that our darkness should give way to his brilliant light. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave, it, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory. And now let us share this meal together. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. <laughs> Having shared this meal together, let us pray the words that our Lord Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthen with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now receive the blessing. Go with God's blessing. As followers of Jesus, we will love our enemies and do good to those who hate us. Go with God's blessings. As followers of Jesus, we will bless those who curse us and pray for those who persecute us. Go with God's blessings. As followers of Jesus, we will do unto others as we would have them do unto us. Go with God's blessings.
Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news.